Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you step by step how I install Soundtrack Tsunami DCC decoder into a Kato AC4400CW. I'll show you the steps I take to install the sound as well as upgrade the tube lighting to 603 surface mount LEDs. So the first thing I'll show you is all the materials you'll need to do this DCC and sound install. A soldering iron, some flux and some solder. I like the uh, rosin core, 60% tin, 40% lead. A pair of safety glasses. We never solder anything without wearing safety glasses. A couple pieces of, uh, I like solid conductor wire to make the motor leads. Some flexible wire for the speaker leads. A Soundtrack Tsunami AT1000 DCC decoder. Soundtracks one inch speaker, this goes in the fuel tank. A Zemo 10 by 15 by 11 cell phone speaker, that goes in the shell. You don't need to install the, uh, you don't have to put the Zemo in if you don't want to, it's kind of extra, but I like the sound of it much better. It's the way that uh, Roar showed me on his installs, and they are, uh, the sound is much superior when you have a, a second speaker in there. And here's the LEDs, 603 type sunny white surface mount diode. The resistors I use for the for the LED install is uh, quarter watt, 1000 ohm resistors. And for this model we will need six LEDs and six resistors. Some all purpose silicone, 364th inch uh, shrink tubing. It also doesn't hurt to have a good pair of tweezers, hobby knife, and one of these little hand helper things. Uh, it comes in handy for holding wires when you need to solder them. Not necessary, but it makes it a lot easier. Very first thing I'm going to do, after I've stripped the, uh, the locomotive down to the, just the basic frame, is solder leads onto the speaker for the fuel tank. To strip little tiny wires like this, you just carefully use a hobby knife and just press on it, roll it with your fingers once, and slide it off. Don't press too hard with the hobby knife or you'll cut the wire. Just like that. Now that we've got our leads soldered onto the speaker, we're going to go ahead and silicone it into the speaker enclosure here on the bottom of the chassis. It is a good idea to mark which one is positive and which one is negative according to the diagram. It'll just save you some time later on trying to figure out which one's which. So all I do is use a toothpick to distribute the silicone all the way around the edge of the speaker enclosure. Then I just press the speaker in and double check that uh, there's no spaces or air holes and that it's a nice tight seal. So you can see I've got the silicone distributed all the way around the outside of the enclosure. So I'm going to go ahead and press my speaker into this and uh, make sure the leads come out one of the slots, I usually use the ones on this side here and they'll run up the side of the frame to the decoder so I got the speaker pressed into the enclosure the leads are tucked away safely in these two little slots so now I'll go around the outside of it with a toothpick and a little bit more silicone and just seal up any spaces that are left open or look like they could use a, a little bit of silicone to cover the holes so I got it spread all around the circular gap all the way around the top and the holes filled for the leads so we'll go ahead and let that dry for about eight hours and come back and it'll be nice and rock solid and airtight okay guys now that the silicone has dried for the uh, recommended time it says on the instructions we can go ahead and flip this over and now we'll start doing the uh, the motor leads for the decoder as well as getting all the wiring ready for it so obviously we've removed the Cato 
light board that came with it. Just two screws and it just pops out. These are the motor leads for the original light board. But these aren't going to work for the Atlas decoder that we're going to put in here. So we're going to cut these off and solder wires to them. That will become the new motor leads and connect to the Soundtracks decoder. So to make those wire leads I just line the decoder up how it's going to be and mark where I need the leads to come in. So these are the motor leads here. So I need to run wires from each of those brass tabs to this, to each one of these. And a uh, word of caution when you're soldering on these, be very careful not to get solder on anywhere on the board because that'll probably be it for your decoder if you drop a blob of solder on it. So just be careful. So we've tinned the wire, and we've tinned our tab, and now we just solder them together. Just like that. So we'll go ahead and do the other one. Okay, so our motor leads are installed. And now I'll show you the only modification you've got to do to get that Atlas soundtrack tsunami decoder to fit so if you look under this screw mount here there's this little rubber kind of tab here this thing right here so we just need to cut that down just a little bit and then the soundtrack tsunami will just fit right in there Just like that. And that decoder just fits perfectly in there, just like that. And you can see my motor leads lined up. See that? And we can go ahead and fasten it down. Okay, so the decoder is secured onto the frame with the two screws. You can see the motor leads lined up nicely and going through there. So I will cut those off so that they are pretty much flush with the top of the board and then solder those on. And then we can go ahead and re reassemble some of it like we'll put the fuel tank cover on and the frame covers and put the trucks in to prepare to solder everything. And you want to make sure Clearance wise, you don't have anything, you notice how I don't have anything sticking out the side of the decoder because that's, you need to make sure you do that because the shell is fairly tight along the sides. So you can see there, no clearance issues with the wiring. Okay, so now that we've got the fuel tank, the side frames, and the trucks back on, we can go ahead and get ready to solder the truck pickups as well as the motor leads here and here. I forgot to mention uh, the way that the wiring is on these cattos I end up wiring them backwards so the motor the locomotive will run in reverse but with JMRI you can just flip that around and it's not an issue. We'll wait to solder the speaker leads here because they need to be wired in series all right, so I'll go ahead and uh, get these soldered up. I like to uh, cut these off, the truck pickups, and have them come up and under, just because it's cleaner and it just uh, gives you a little bit more room on top. So I'll go ahead and solder these up.